Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at the full release of this city builder that allows us to colonize not only some of the original 13 colonies of the United States, but also the Caribbean. Welcome aboard to our first look at Colonize. Well, kind of more of a new recent look. We've seen this game before on the channel in a demo format, but now it is fully released to the public and offers some very interesting settings, a tutorial, and much more. For those of you who love survival city builders, we have ourselves Roanoke, Bermuda, and Plymouth to try out here today, with differences in these games being about the snow days. For example, obviously Bermuda is going to have none and is in a subtropical climate, but Plymouth, for example, Plymouth is going to have uh, 40 plus snow days as well to worry about so uh, very heavily focused on games similar to banished if you're familiar with that and or uh, maybe perhaps like farthest frontier with having to prepare resources to survive a winter and also other threats out there you never know so anyway without further ado thank you very much everyone for subscribing to the channel seriously thank you very much as we rocket towards two million subscribers here in raptoria Glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section. Thanks for all the likes, too. And let me know, if you were uh, going to be a governor of a colony or whatnot, where would you want to be? Would it be uh, the original Plymouth Rock? Or would it be Bermuda, dealing with pirates or something like that? Recently playing a lot more Black Flag because of Skull and Bones that dropped. And it makes me think to myself, is there ever going to be a pirate city builder? Well, actually there will be. And I'll show you that pretty soon on the channel as well. So anyway, without further ado, we'll start at uh, not Plymouth, not Bermuda, but good old Roanoke. I think we've seen Plymouth Rock before in some of the earlier demos for this game and previews that have helped to make this a better one. So let's start here in Roanoke in uh, 1590. And we're going to uh, have ourselves a temperate maritime climate, 30% trees, 10 snow days, and a medium difficulty. Let's get started. We labored to rid the Church of England of the vestiges of papal influence. Despised as Puritans, we suffered persecution and were forced into exile. In the year of our Lord, 1620, we left Europe on a religious mission to establish a godly government. In Plymouth, we boarded Mayflower, an ark that would carry us to the promised land. Soon, we were besieged on all sides by the treacherous ocean. Scurvy and fear of imminent death accompanied us for the remainder of our journey. We barely reached the new world alive after months on the high seas. The fear of retribution plagued our minds. Our countrymen had already warred with local tribes over this land. Many of us, too, believed we were not destined to share it. Famine and sickness struck our colony. We resorted to stealing food from the natives. The whole settlement feared the violent wrath of their war parties. Instead, one of them befriended us. Squanto spoke our language. Despite previously having suffered in slavery at the hands of our kind, he arranged for us to trade with the people of the First Light, thus saving our very lives. They introduced us to the beauty and bounty of our unforgiving surroundings. But most settlers still refused to see them as equals. Others would only deal with them if they commit to his word. Shall peace be sustained by sturdy plowshares or instruments of warfare? Well, here we are at the start of the settlement of the colony of Roanoke. We have ourselves a small little village already set up and our dock, which is connected to a giant ship. Check that out. Yeah, we've already got a ship here that's offloaded some supplies. And you can see some of those on the beach. We have a fishing boat here. They've already built a dock and a small road that then leads to the settlement, in which has an eating house for our people, a temporary shelter. It looks like a cellar and then a warehouse to uh, store all of our goods, food, and of course, house our people. Now, our goal here today will be to try to uh, kind of connect everything together and start to expand our colony. And our settlement, of course, will need to defend itself against the cold primarily. So all these trees will have to go as we then start to make firewood. A great thing about this map is I don't think we've seen this one before. Certainly not Bermuda or whatnot. And so, uh, again, this is kind of more of a medium difficulty map that has a lot more to do with the uh, kind of a fine balance between preparing for the winter and also kind of having a little bit more 
uh, to build over time. Now, uh, we've got some large rolling hills and mountains here and a lot of great thick trees that will really provide us with a wonderful source for building and also access to more water on the other side. So we'll see what that uh, has in store for us. It looks like some other marshlands up here, maybe? Not quite, but I'm looking at all the different types of terrain, and I certainly like little scenes like this. All right, let's go ahead and get started. As you'd imagine, all these folks will need additional homes or whatnot in order to uh, begin having their own families, and time here rather goes quickly as we prepare for uh, winter. So we've got our temperature down here, lower left corner, something we really need to pay attention to right now. It's in Celsius, so it's a, a little chilly, but it's getting to be more of the summer. We're getting closer to summer, so 11 people here. We've got ourselves... Um, logs and planks and stone and uh, different types of food. I think this is potatoes, yeah. Then we've got ourselves wheat and flour and meat and other things, including money to be able to trade. And some really interesting buildings to start with. We can then start with the woodcutter immediately and then start making planks. We have a quarry. Love the artwork here for a lot of these buildings. Fishery, uh, a well. We have ourselves uh, farming and we have bakeries, which then is the end of that, as well as the pig farm and chicken farms, too. Housing for our people, which does include a house. More of those shelters that we just built, and or ra rather that's already come here at the uh, start of the settlement. And then a warehouse and uh, cellars, too. We can connect everything up with roads and then also decorate. And that'll be visible at nighttime if we add lighting, which looks quite nice. So let's go ahead and get started by building, first and foremost, the woodcutter. Without the woodcutter, we do not have the ability to, well, get wood to basically make more homes so clearly there's a little area of kind of uh i guess um negative debuff or whatever you want to call it so it's not desirable it's noisy possibly smelly depending on what building you're dealing with so we'll build this a little bit out of town but maybe a little bit more where we want to cut down some trees i think this would be a good spot here to start so we'll plop that down right around here as you can see it is a free placement no grid to be seen but we can place things at a 90 degree angle and honestly, I think in games like this, especially when you want to build a small, tight-knit colony, that's probably your best bet is to try to build everything close together in order to then uh, make travel time shorter. And in most cases, uh, if you're building with, like, for example, defenses, you'll have to make sure that you've, uh, you know, built everything close together because you want your walls to be a lot smaller so you can have more people uh, defending more area or less area. And that way you have more military coverage. I'm going to go ahead and try to build a road here all the way to... Uh, the the center of town we'll kind of make something like that there and roads are essentially free to build we just lay it out for all the citizens to uh, basically travel on and we can also do those at an angle too so pretty nice I think what we'll do here is we'll make a road that goes up here to go to our eventual sawmill uh, we're gonna build a sawmill up here in addition to the woodcutter so we'll build that like this and you know the, the roads actually fit together quite nicely I do wish there was some sort of a um, in a lot of grid-based games now, you'll see like a bunch of white lines going in all directions from where you're placing something, so you can flush up some edges. That would be good. I'm also not seeing a settings menu here, only the ability to save, return to the menu, and resume. And I don't see a settings option, so it would be nice for those of you who want to turn down the volume or uh, modify visual settings or something. I think that would be only helpful to the player if the developer could add that uh, at a later date. But regardless, let's go ahead and connect these buildings up here. And, uh, yeah, you can kind of see how all the early roads of, like, Boston and other uh, settlements were. Because, of course, just having horses and just getting uh, things settled, you just tried to connect them as quickly and uh, directly as possible. So you ended up with a lot of roads like this that then eventually would be upgraded for horses and then eventually just, you know, modern day roads. In our uh, ship here, we can actually trade with the mainland this way. So uh, you could imagine that we're a French colony or Dutch colony. I don't think there's any uh, differences here. Which means that you could, even though we're at Roanoke, you could pretend that we're perhaps at New Amsterdam, a.k.a. New York City. So it would be kind of cool to be able to, A, see a different type of ship or different flags, and then maybe also eventually different languages if you clicked on your people. A lot of different details that might be subtle, but it would be really unique. Okay, well, our people are probably going to need to get to work on that, so we're going to set max priority on that one and make sure that they can start uh, getting things constructed over there. We have our population overview, so we can see everybody's information about if they're married, who they are, where they work, what their happiness is, health, and other stats. And then we also have the ability to easily buy and sell resources here that will then get shipped to the boat. Okay, everybody is going out to grab some logs now to get started on that woodcutter, and then we should be able to start getting everyone employed from there. So everyone comes on over. Everybody works. Nobody uh, nobody takes a day off, and everybody's capable of uh, you know any sort of bodily movement 
must be moving their body. You got to get this stuff done before the winter. Love the look of the cellar, and I will uh, agree that things look really washed out right now, really bright. But that's because the sun's coming up. If there's a difference in brightness because of the time of season and also differences in the trees, that'll be just fine. In fact, uh, one of my favorite games for weather transitions and for grass and other things like this is Farthest Frontier. Farthest Frontier, a game you've probably seen before on the channel, and Farthest Frontier features a lot of different lighting and uh, weather effects and other things like that to really help show what time of year it is without even having to glance down and see the month or even the, uh, the day. Although that doesn't have a day-night cycle, this game does, and that's going to be really cool. All right, the eating house is probably already packed full of uh, people working there. Uh, we already have somebody there. Eating time is between 16 and 23, and uh, everybody comes on over and grabs some food, to which right now I think it's just going to be whatever we can make out of, like, potatoes. Now, we can farm in this game and ship out all of our cash crops via boat, so, you know, we could grow tobacco and have our people enjoy that here at our settlement, but the amounts in which we can grow... Uh, would be vastly much larger than they could consume, and thus we can use that for money to buy other things that we might want over time. Now, we're going to throw together a settlement here just to kind of try to see as many features and buildings as we can in the shortest amount of time. But if you already would like to see a series on this game, let me know if you think I should do a full playthrough. Do you want a full playthrough, a series, a playlist on this one? Uh, I'm certainly willing to go to locations like Bermuda, and uh, continue on here in Roanoke or even see Plymouth Rock again with all sorts of different uh, changes from the developers from the earlier days. I don't think we had access to things like this, uh, a, uh, a fishing uh, building at all. And I'm not sure, do we have to put this online, uh, on land? Can be built anywhere and fishermen will go to the nearest water source to catch dinner. Okay, so apparently this is something that we build on the land and then they'll take care of the nets and the boats here and then go out to shore. I would, I would like to see more of a dock here, but I get it. <clears throat> so that's something we can see in the future. Not seeing any sort of berries or herbalist or um, any buildings like that. We do have a hunter, though. So that actually might be a good building to put out in the woods, too. Let's go ahead and plop that over there. And our people are already done. Look at that. They've already completed the first building. This game does pause whenever we go into the build menu. So if you're going to be building and you're waiting for time to pass, it uh, probably is a good idea just to build everything that you want to and then set things via priority. So you can start turning on and off and raising and lowering priority. <clears throat> Although I think you can only do it for one building at a time. I don't think you can actually set a queue for one, two, three, four in terms of priority. I think it's just whatever is marked as the highest, that's the way it'll be. So you'll just have to kind of constantly fast forward and pause based on that. People bringing over planks now. Looks like we have actually logs. Um, they're bringing that over now. Very good. And we've got, oh, we can set work time as well, can we? Oh, yes, we can. Each building individually can have its work time set. So number of workers here is two. We've already got people working there, I think. Yeah, Arthur Hopkins, for example, is working there. This is free time, though. And uh, one of the most important things about a game like this, too, especially one where uh, the I think the most amount of settlers that we're going to get aren't necessarily from people coming from the old world to the new world, but through having children. And so it's going to be very important, especially in the beginning of this game, uh, two major complaints that still kind of haunt me about it that I hope are different. And I can luckily say I believe they are is nighttime, ironically enough, was too dark in a city builder. You do want to be able to see what's going on at nighttime, and this one would basically go pitch black. Another game by the name of Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Do you remember that game? Workers and Resources would be too dark, and it was just impossible to build at nighttime. In a survival game, like, for example, uh, Stranded Deep or Green Hell, you certainly want to be able to simulate nighttime by having it be very dark and impeding movement and whatnot. But in a city builder, you sh should still be able to make orders like building roads and whatnot. Uh, luckily, it's a lot brighter at nighttime, so you can keep playing. And another great thing uh, that they've changed that was very dreadful at the beginning, very difficult, was time would go by too quickly and you would have to basically build homes immediately in order for people to have children. Otherwise, everybody would die of old age. They would literally, within a matter of maybe 10 or 15 minutes, would go from age 25 to like 75 and would no longer be able to have children. I'm not kidding. Uh, it was a very big problem that really hindered the game. You would have to pause and everything would have to come down to like whether or not somebody could deliver a log in time by taking like the shortest route possible Otherwise, you couldn't build a home, and without homes, people can't start families and won't raise kids. And then your population would go from 11 down to basically zero. Everyone would just die off of essentially being sterile. But anyway, here we have a big list of people like Jack and James and Arthur and Edward, Isabel and whatnot. A lot of these people are married. Some are not. 
uh, three of the men here, Arthur, James, and Thomas, do not have... Um, they're not married, and so they're basically going to, um, unfortunately, perhaps die alone, and uh, we don't want that, so hopefully maybe people will come in via boat. I'm not sure what other changes exist, but certainly it is good to get those buildings up ASAP. If we take a look at homes then, we have ourselves uh, the uh, standard house, and it looks pretty much like the, it almost looks like all the other buildings, to be honest. Uh, it looks like all these buildings here, uh, including the uh, cookhouse or the eatery. And uh, this one here takes 10 wood, 12 planks, and 12 stones in order to uh, build that one. And I think it has a... Ma oh, it says there in the lower right corner. Uh, two adults can live there, mother and a father, and then five children. And I think the game is set that uh, people won't bunk together as if it were like a work building. Like you can't, for example, put a building up here and have the... Like if you had uh, five or so men working in this area as a blacksmith and other things like that... I, I don't think the game will prioritize distance for that if they're unmarried. So it's a good idea to try to keep everything close together. But also, we need to keep things apart because of the uh, debuff and the concerns with noise. So that's something we should probably consider. We'll go ahead and build a couple of houses here just to see how they look. And uh, we'll plop one down there just to get it built. And uh, our people should be able to build that after they're done with the uh, Hunter's Lodge, which they're pretty much done with right now. A good-looking building, by the way. I've got to say I like the, the look of this game with how it constructs buildings. And there will be, I think, some new standards when it comes to building games over the next few years when everyone gets a chance to play Manor Lords. Now, games like Farthest Frontier and going all the way back to the Sierra games, like, if you do you remember um, Pharaoh or... Uh, Emperor, Rise of the Middle Kingdom, those old school Sierra City builders, and some of which we played recently too, uh, were very good with how they would make monuments look, and you could actually see them be done by phases. And with Manor Lords coming around, I love the fact that developers are paying more attention to things like grass and uh, thickness of that rather than it just being a painted ground, uh, you know, like kind of just a texture. Uh, and also buildings having different types of uh, materials delivered, and you can actually watch the construction. One of the first games that caught my eye for that was another game called Ostrave, which allows you to build uh, a village or a little city in the 1700s in Ukraine. Uh, is pretty much what I'm, I'm getting the vibe for that one. And it's beautiful to watch all the wood be brought over, just like here have it uh, cut down and turned into planks or whatever and then brought into position. So I'm seeing more and more developers put in details like this. That's great. I love this. Planks sitting here. You see a hammer on the planks. Uh, you have little step stools and ladders and whatnot. It just would be cool if the workers actually used those things. And so I would give massive props and points to games like Manor Lords and other games that would actually show construction like that. But regardless, we still see people here uh, building stuff. In an Austria, you can actually see uh, these beams and other things being lifted into place so it's pretty phenomenal to be able to see where you know i love these little details and so when you're building even if it's a small village uh, it's really cool to be able to see them digging a hole for a cellar or putting on shingles or you know bringing carts and things around so pretty cool i gotta say great music too good music on the menu and good music here as well hopefully it keeps us entertained for many hours and we can see the output here of cutting down all these trees. So uh, we're probably going through all the logs fairly quickly. Here we have 19 remaining. Uh, looks like some things that we've got stored are wood, leather, firewood, planks, stones, and also winter clothes. We have no, no winter clothes. So uh, we're probably, for the first year, going to have to rely on the hunter to gather some leather and whatnot in order to try to make us some clothing to survive. Obviously, things like farming are probably out of the question for the first couple of years. And uh, we'll build ourselves a well and see if we can bring some well-being to our people. It's all well and good, right? See what I did there? I know. All right, let's go ahead and plop that down there. And we need somebody to gather stone. So we could build a quarry. And I would imagine that the quarry workers will probably go out to sources like this. Uh, people will mine from the mountain. Uh, thus, the quarry can only be built in certain places. Oh, so we can build it like next to here. We'll, we'll just build it there and say that they're going to mine out that stone. That's enough to start the city. Unfortunately, we can't click on this source and see what's there. Other games do sometimes show you that there's a finite amount of resources and how much, but uh, in this case, no. No curved roads, though. Uh, another great game that you may have seen on the channel, New Cycle, did a fantastic job of making a grid-based city builder that also was not grid-based and was kind of free to build roads and uh, railroads and pathways and such that would curve and um, 
I, I don't mind seeing a really, this actually looks quite cool to see the angled roads and stuff coming through, but uh, love it when we can actually curve roads and make them look more like their uh, footpaths rather than actual roads for uh, wagons and horses and other things to be transported on them. So pretty nice. All right, anything else on the boat? Yeah, so the boat has offloaded everything into the warehouse. The ship will eventually ship those things out, although I don't ever think we see this ship leaving or, or uh, coming back or other ships come through. So I would love to see different ships arriving, things like clippers and sloops and other things like that, especially if your colony gets, uh, you know, I mean, you'd have to wait for several hundred years to pass, but it would be cool to see this settlement go from 1585 to damn near 1700 and see the different types of ships and uh, resources and prices change too over different commodities. That would be quite fascinating. But right now I think our biggest thing is tobacco, and I wonder if we can actually grow sugarcane in the Caribbean. Here we do have corn which is a very, uh, what would you say, hardy crop or resilient? It's very resilient in terms of these uh, different conditions of weather. So it does a good job in, in these types of climates. Oh, and we can already see that the woodcutter has done a great job of cutting down tons of trees and possibly is growing some back. It looks like they're targeting the biggest trees first and then maybe these uh, smaller spruces or pine trees or whatever. Firs will eventually uh, either grow to be much larger and cut down later or they'll just be ignored entirely. Cool to see different types of rocks here. This shoreline really reminds me of, oh boy, what was the name of that game as well? Viking, um, Viking, not Frontiers, but uh, I, there's been so many Viking city builders too. Perhaps you guys can remind me the one with the earthquakes and lightning strikes and you get to build in a beautiful fjord as well. And that's kind of what this map reminds me of here, but good to see the water and good to see a day-night cycle. Here we go. Now it's starting to get to be about 1800 now, uh, time-wise. And it looks like, oh, they're not done with the well yet, but let's be through the night and kind of take a look at what nighttime looks like and what happens, which is basically nothing. Birds will still fly around our dock, of course, and our people have been very speedy with their building. Pretty much everything's done, minus the quarry and the well, which will still take some stone. So that's exactly what the quarry will be for, as we've only got 14. The, uh, the well itself seems to only require four more. Either that's four in total or four remaining. Four out of 15, that's what it is. Okay. It would be kind of cool to actually see that number here on the right side. Um, I like the bar filling up, but also to hover over that is just an extra step to see what we're short. So we should be able to build that well, no problem. Let's go up to speed three now. The one, uh, the other one's without Sandra Bullock, and we'll see if we can also build another house. Who gets to live here? I'm not sure if there's a way to actually um, showcase that, but it does say affordable home uh, housing, so that means the homes will give us gold, and that gold probably is dictated by happiness and other things like that. I don't see a way for us to actually set any sort of like um, rent or prices for anything. It just seems like we're answering to the crown. Hence, the king requires our services, which is the uh, I guess the name, the kind of the the tagline of the game. Is that what you call it? The tagline. And um, yeah, I mean we are kind of just a steward, really. And that's something <laughs> that I think is going to stick with a lot of people for Frostpunk 2. Have you seen Frostpunk 2's trailer? What do you think about the game so far, by the way, with what you've seen? Are you excited? Do you think it's not going to be so good? I certainly was very hyped, as well as everybody else, with uh, games like City Skylines 2. It's like, well, this has got to be a big dub. There's no way they could screw this up. And then a um, bit of a rough launch, but there's always the possibility of coming back. I always root for developers to do good and then to do great and or amazing things. A good example of that, of course, is No Man's Sky, with that one starting with, uh, well, you know, m m much, much, much to be desired and then delivering about, uh, on that and then even coming out with a second game uh, pretty soon as well uh, that will be launching. And so it's always a good thing to hear about stories where uh, redemption, people coming back and trying to live up to, to all the hype. Some developers, I think, just go straight right into the... Uh, monetization and other things like that. You could argue that with the recent Skull and Bones, with that being 70 bucks with a lot of microtransactions inside for cosmetics. But still, I think there's a, it's always something when the, uh, the game itself has some issues and connectivity problems. But you know damn well that store is always going to connect. You try to, hey, you want to spend uh, 500 bucks there? That will always work. The power could be out. Hell, even as a sign of death, waff the Waffle House could be closed. Waffle House could be closed. And then I think the only close either during uh, catastrophic asteroid strikes like back in the days of the dinosaurs and also um, 
you know, a volcano eruption. <laughs> so there you go. All right, our people are uh, sleeping safe and sound inside their houses here. Oh, and do we have children already? Whoa, they got busy. Whoa, Evelyn and uh, uh, Maurice. We've already got our first two kids. All right. Now, I didn't see anything for a school, but all right, we're going to get cracking with building uh, two more houses here. And I'm not sure if this is the type of game, and we've seen these before, where um, people will age almost like four, five, six, ten times uh, in actual space in-game speed so like for example in the course of a year in game someone will go from age zero to like age 12 to then like age 18 within just a matter of years and then they'll start moving out looking for their own uh, significant other and all that kind of thing all right looks like we're looking for some more hunter let's actually add a little bit of time to that one hunter um i guess prey is what we're looking for not seeing any though but we could also build ourselves a fishery and make sure that everybody's employed. There is a way to see everybody's employment here. Labor essentially is quote unquote unemployed, but they're still doing things like um, yeah, hauling things to a building and also doing the construction. So yeah, when you see that well getting constructed, that's exactly what they're doing. More decorations, that's good. Does that increase desirability? I don't know way to actually tell. Statue of Charles the first, interesting. Oh, cool. Some actual lore here about uh, the Puritans and religious groups in England, etc. Very cool. And the fact that we can put down little potted plants is nice as well. Hopefully we can put down little fences, although I don't see that. I would like to do that for the farm fields, which may or may not come with a fence. They certainly do. Cool. So then we could probably grow the things that we saw up here at any of the farms. Corn, potato, barley, uh, potato, tomato, hogs, dogs. You name it. Okay. Uh, the homes are looking good. They're getting those built right away. I do. I really do dislike how we can't be in the build menu while also uh, having the construction take place. I do wish that eventually we can do both. I understand the reason for that, and some games do go into a build mode. For example, The Sims, so that way it kind of doesn't interfere with the sim doing stuff while you're trying to buy stuff. It kind of gives you a a little bit of a respite or a break from managing the sim to then build a house or decorate it. But in this case, I love the fact where we put our quarry. I also don't see any sort of mines here. Uh, going back to what I mentioned earlier about a blacksmith, I don't actually see anything beyond that. It is just kind of the starting of our settlement, but um, maybe more things will unlock over time. Yeah, I don't see anything like that. Uh, I don't see tools either so I think the biggest resource that we could probably export would be uh, things like wool and uh, also crops so tobacco and maybe even if we can go to the Caribbean which we can of course uh, growing things like sugarcane that would be super powerful for then maybe making more end game items like rum and distilling all of that into uh, rum and then making bottles and things like that and shipping that out. That would be amazing. And we will be getting uh, some other pirate games like uh, Pirates Republic or Pirate Pub Republic. We haven't yet played that on the channel, but I'm very excited to see more games that allow us to build in uh, pirate settings and, uh, you know, like the uh, Caribbean and or Asia. Things like uh, Chinese and Japanese and Korean city builders for um, times long, long before ancient cities would be absolutely astounding preparing for things like the Mongol invasions and um, just trading resources that were important to them, including the staples like rice and having that shipped to other parts of the uh, of the map or the empire, or what, whatever you happen to be doing. It'd be cool if it went beyond just quote-unquote city builder. All right, our people are almost done with the quarry. We've now got 14 people in the city, and they're getting very busy. Jack and uh, Jill? <laughs> Isabella getting very busy. 22. And 29. Nice. Nice. So yeah, it looks like they've already got three children. Let's take a look at the kids then to see if they've aged. Yep. So it hasn't even been a year yet. We went from April to May. And so now we have a child who's already a year. So it looks like it does still do the accelerated time for aging. But it looks like it's way less than what it used to be. I'm telling you folks, like if you did not have that house done within like a matter of uh, maybe a minute and a half of building in the game, uh, people would just age too quickly and it was over. So now we can finally have uh, a diverse group of uh, folks here at the settlement. And what would also be cool is the ability to do things where we communicate back with the homeland 
and possibly can order goods for these colonies. So, you know, things like tell, tell more people that it's A-OK -okay to move in, uh, discovering things like gold and, uh, you know, other rumors and things like that that would bring people here, but then eventually would be like, well, there's none of those resources here or very limited compared to what we thought, but we can still build a massive settlement, that kind of thing. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will be asking, is, is there war? Are there defenses? They certainly do imply that because of the uh, reference to native people such as Squanto and then going to war with, uh, well, not only the locals and having fears of that, but also uh, others like, for example, the French or the British uh, fighting each other or the Dutch or whomever, Spanish, for example. And so it doesn't look like there's any threat of war or invasion or let alone wolves or bears. So I don't see anything like firearms. I don't see walls or gates or towers, but still colonizing the new world is exciting. And I certainly want to see more things to build in the future. And I think I do want to still build that fishery. I do want to get more uh, food going for our houses. If we can build that maybe down here somewhere. Can't build it too close to the shore. But it also has a little bit of a stank factor to it. No one wants to live next to the uh, to the fishing camp. I don't blame them. Maybe we could put it down here. I'm, I'm just trying to get it as close to the water as we can. Needs a little bit more flat land, I think. Also, beginning to play this does remind me of the Settlers games, which does have a new game as well called Pioneers of Pagonia, I believe it is. And uh, that one is literally made by the maker who... Uh, made uh, settlers and so it's got a lot to do with that as well and uh, seeing a boat docked and being able to trade goods and other things like that's quite cool actually oh there we go that's a much nicer looking road perfect all right so two more houses being constructed how are we doing our resources we have no more stones no more planks we do need to build a sawmill which i did forget we'll need to put that down as well so let's go ahead and plop that over here and uh, yes, again, remember this game does have a full tutorial for things like how to grow crops and uh, explaining a few more things on farming. And those things are not too overly complicated. But if you haven't played a game like this before, it will only benefit you. And or if it's been a while since you played Banished, this could be one to get you right back into a survival city builder. All right, I like the fact that we're building a sawmill next to a uh, woodcutter. So that's quite nice there. And it looks like our uh, quarry is going to need timber, and our sawmill is going to need both timber and uh, well, planks and uh, stone there. So it looks like we're completely out of planks. We're completely out of uh, stone. So let's see what happens if we need to undo some things. We'll go ahead and uh, see if we can delete some buildings. Don't know if we can mark these for demolishing. What we're going to be doing is instead of demolishing, we're just going to be using those resources elsewhere. And I don't... Oh, here we go. Ah, this is how we demolish. Okay, so we'll have to... Well, that's interesting. We can click on the road sections to demolish that. But how do we demolish a house if we've kind of expanded a little too much? There's a build menu here. Again, we have our decorations. Demolition mode. Well, we can click the X again to demolish road sections, but I'm not sure about uh, deleting a home or building, really. But we'll put that back. Luckily, we don't have to pay anything for road construction, so if we want to lay out our city ahead of time, once you get a little bit more experience with the game and know in the back of your mind the size of homes and kind of the radius of things like the well and uh, storage and whatnot, you can basically build a almost a perfect pre-planned city with plans for expansion, which kind of helps things to look a little bit more nice and um, correct for the era. So demolishing, huh? Oh, whoa. All right, wow, I demolished the entire... Oh, Roanoke has been demolished. No, it's over here. <laughs> it's like I sunk the island. Oh, here we go. We have ourselves our first little furry friend, a deer. So that'll be something that the hunter will go get. We've already got... Uh, Oh, we've got nobody hunting yet. Travels around your settlement in search of wild animals. Produces meat and leather. Okay, cool. So they may only be working at certain hours of the day. Looks like from 1 p.m. to 22. So they'll be starting work shortly. Very nice. So now we're a little stunlocked. What happens when the player needs to move resources from one construction site to another? We're building our sawmill. 
We've got uh, the logs delivered, but we still need things like the stone, and the quarry will require um, the quarry will require planks. And in order to build the sawmill, we need wood. So really, you want to go from uh, you want to go from woodcutter to that. All right now, people need more food here, so we're somehow we have more potatoes than when we started. Mm, guess we should have somebody cooking here. We've got 20 meat, 20 fish. 15 potatoes, 40 flour, and 10 corn. People want more food. So they're going to simply have to just go and get a meal, I suppose. They're working very hard, our people. And so they're doing a good job of uh, at least getting the basics delivered. I want to see if I can... There just doesn't seem to be a way to actually delete a home under construction. Is there a way to delete a home if we've built it already? Wow, look at that. They've already got a full uh, set of kids already. I can't believe that. So I think when we're setting priorities to max, we're setting it to max for the construction of a building, but not we are not able to pause construction, and we're not able to uh, delete a building that's pre-existing. We can only demolish roads. So it seems, anyway. And people need more food, but they're going to have to go out and... Uh, Get that at like 23. So what do we have here? For our people, we we can actually get a full uh, breakdown of what they do and who they are, which is cool. So we have Margaret Byers, who's on work time right now, 24-year-old female, who says, don't even ask for my opinion. I don't know if that's just something funny or it probably could be an overall view of the colony, that kind of thing. But here we have her strength and intelligence. So this might be important to who you give to what job. Strength will be more important for like farming and logging and intelligence could be more important for things like weaving and maybe accounting or something along those lines. Then we have here hunger, health, happiness, and then energy. So uh, the happiness probably could be related to maybe we can make a brewery at some point with the, uh, we do have wheat again, remember, and barley. So those could be something we could make a beer out of or there could be other spirits that we could import perhaps that we can't make. And then we also have the... Um, health and I don't see a building for um, health care or anything like that so very interesting but it does look like our worker here uh, Margaret Riley has at least cr uh, has access to make food for when people come through here so it says this is a place where your settlers can eat meat and socialize so that's where they kind of eh, get a little groovy with it if you know what I mean and they're able to have babies from there and they're also able to come here and have their drinks so that's something that should increase food and also social well-being aka happiness necessity for people to get to know each other and start families yeah so the eating house is kind of like your uh i don't know it's like the the best place in town it's like a wendy's right anybody that live near wendy's those spicy nugs just hit different and that's the best way to really truly start a family okay well we got less people living there let's take a look here at the economy well we could buy some more things if we need we can just buy the planks that we need uh, after me being a goober, so we can go ahead and buy. Eh, we'll just kind of do like, buy, what do we need for the uh, the thing there? Of course, that's always an option. So plank wise, we need 15, and we'll prioritize that building so we can get it done. Actually, no, we'll prioritize the quarry. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Priority is set to max. So let's go ahead and buy some more planks then. And we'll see if they actually like come here right away or if the boat leaves or whatnot. We'll kind of test this out. So let's go ahead and buy 15 planks and we'll buy 15 stone. And we'll buy a little bit of firewood too. And a little bit of actual log logage as well just to keep us ahead. All right, we've bought that. It's immediate, but it's on the ship now. So I'm assuming that the people who work at the warehouse, which is anybody who is a laborer, question mark? I don't know if they actually, uh, I don't know if the people who work there also double as a laborer. But anyway, everybody who works at the warehouse who is not delivering stuff should be able to pick that up. It says, the warehouse is a basic but very important building for your settlements. It stores all materials, resources, and non-edible products made by your settlers, a.k.a. Uh, things like cloth and fiber and... Uh, Maybe flour, because that's not directly edible. You'd probably want to turn that into a... Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be in the cellar, but yeah, there it is. Wait, eggs. Oh, there's flour. 
Okay, and well, we also have some eggs too, so we should have plenty of food, all these food alerts. I mean, we've got uh, water in there and meat and bread and uh, some raw resources. We also have tobacco in there of 20. Interesting, we could actually sell that off right away, although that could be for people's happiness, but maybe selling all the tobacco and things you have at the start to be able to speed build within the first year to then get your farming up, especially when you know that you can put so much effort into uh, having uh, children by having a couple of houses ready within, I mean, we've got a two-year-old here now. Not sure when people enter the working age in this game, but uh, back in these days, it'd be like once you can kind of get working in the kitchen or get working in the farm fields, that's what you have to do. Learn those survival skills from your elders ASAP before disease strikes your elders. Things like hunting and fishing and how to skin and field dress and farm and bake and other things like that are not only just essential to life, but... Uh, they're, you know, of course, better for your, your society. You can grow and maybe start your own business, which is cool. All right. So now we're going to wait and see when daytime comes around, if everybody will take things off of that boat. We do have the ability to give everyone different work hours, too, which is pretty cool. I'm assuming this will hurt happiness, but if we give them a 12-hour day. Yeah. Or we could have them work 24 hours. It would be nice in this building, too, to give them shifts, like staggered shifts would be cool. At this point, we have a colony that almost is along the lines of, like, RimWorld, where we could give everybody, like, different priorities to their job, uh, where you tell somebody, okay, hunting is your number one, mining is your number two, and uh, building is your number three priority, that kind of thing. And then everybody who is, uh, well, doesn't have something to do can do things in those orders. That's pretty cool. We've already had some deaths, I think. We've had people up to 16... Uh, now back down to 15. So I'm not sure if people are dying of starvation or just old age. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little of both. But we do get to take a look at everybody. I'm fine. All good. Could be starvation there. Hey, a little bit of rain. All right. Some fogginess, some rain. It's now July of the first year. Now, I think our situation here to prepare for the winter would be okay for the first couple of years based on all the things that we have in the cellar and based on our population. I think we'd be okay, but I am more curious uh, to see now how things would look in Bermuda if we get different types of buildings and, uh, again, different types of things to be able to uh, gather for food. I don't think we could have deer as much as we would have fish, and maybe we could have a little bit more better luck getting things like birds and fruit and fish rather than deer and uh, flour and potatoes, things that were hardy to these. Um, I guess this essentially is the Townsend Simulator, right? John Townsend Simulator, essentially. Even though we're starting in uh, 1585, I think a lot of those recipes and things that made it over to the New World that lasted and helped them to get through hundreds of winters were things that just kind of sold like crazy and were you know, recommended by settlers to other settlers being like, uh, hey, this book worked for our family, you should get it too, or this recipe was written down and handed down uh, from person to person about things like beef stew and uh, things to, uh, you know, take butter and be able to put those into pots and store things like that. Uh, there's many different techniques to do those things, but it would be another great thing to see in a game like this, for sure. Does this building not have a roof over it? Kind of weird to see, like, the... I guess it's a wall. It's a wall around. This very much, for me, whatever reason, looks like a Japanese building. Uh, something you'd find in Japan. Almost looks like a dojo or like the entrance to a home. Um, I mean, remove this little shack here and put put a, a Japanese-style roof on top of it and it'd be a Japanese-style city builder to me immediately. Uh, the roofs are very important here in, in giving a distinct look to things. Here we don't have thatch. We have wooden shingles, so that's cool as well. So that explains why a building takes so much wood to build in terms of lumber or logs for the I'm assuming for the framing and whatnot and also the foundation but then also beams so the lumber mill is going to be important here too okay looks like we've almost got enough planks did I only buy 15 when we need 20 was I being a goober again couldn't buy a few more couldn't hurt well we could only buy like six more so let's do that Ooh, do I see Oh, I th those were birds. <laughs> I thought I saw snowflakes flying around the screen. Yeah, very good so far. All right, there has been tremendous progress on this game so far, I've got to say, and I certainly want to see a lot more progress as well. Some of the things that I mentioned are things that I think the developers could work on that would give players a little bit more ease to be able to make mistakes, learn, 
and then uh, instead of restarting the the city or the game multiple times to learn the subtle nuances, to be able to kind of use an in-game eraser to then change up their plants, especially if you've built a building that you no longer want to have in a particular location. For example, moving houses from away from the shore to then maybe delete those for an industrial area and then move the houses somewhere else. There may be options for that, but I truly don't see a way to delete any of the homes here. But the problems that I had with the uh, quick uh, to life and quick to death where people would age incredibly rapidly and almost have the settlement wiped out by the end of the first winter and the day-night cycle where it became impossible to see at nighttime. Now it's uh, almost midnight and you can see pretty damn fine. There is also the ability to change brightness and other things like that through your settings or your monitor. But really, I think it uh, just needed to be a lot brighter. And that was my hesitation of playing this one again before now. So I'm glad that I did. And uh, we are certainly going to uh, go take a look at Bermuda now and see what else she has to offer. Let's go take a look at these other maps. All right. So now we're in Bermuda. A little bit different layout, but essentially the same buildings. Our cellar, warehouse, shelter, and the uh, eating house are all the same. And the buildings look the same as well. The boat's the same. The dock is a little different, though, so I do appreciate a little change to uh, that. But essentially, the map looks almost identical in terms of it being a um, more of a temperate setting. I'm not seeing too much tropical uh, life here. But it still works for me to pretend that I'm in Bermuda and that, uh, you know, it's a little bit more tropical with how the water looks and how the islands look as well. So good attention to de detail here. It kind of reminds me of Stronghold a little bit with some of those islands isolated that are pretty to look at. And we've also got a large bay here, which uh, looks to be saltwater, saltwater bay. So, and that goes all the way out to the sea. Pretty cool. All right. Now, uh, also, Plymouth Rock is similar to what we saw at Roanoke. So, uh, some diversification of the maps is good, but I need to see a little bit more here in terms of uh, different trees and different uh, boats and things like that. But still, believable. And... Uh, I really hope that we get to expand into things like sugarcane and rum and uh, hope that the different climates would produce different goods. And then we should be able to trade with, you know, different business partners that way and uh, whatnot. But pretty cool. Not bad. Guys, well, that's our time for today, everyone. If you made it this far, smash the uh, like button and spam the word rum down below in the comment section. This one has a ways to go still, but has come a long way from what I saw before. And I certainly do want to do a live stream on this one to answer more of your questions and to really see how big of a city we can make and to see if there's any sort of point where there is a massive drop off for death or disease or just lag or any sort of kind of performance issues like that. But so far, so good. Again, that's what started out pretty good and it's getting better. And I want to see it be great. I hope you're great too. So thank you very much for watching uh, the channel. Thank you very much for subscribing all the time and hanging out and being awesome in our chat and our live streams and in the comments section. And just supporting for like the last decade as the channel rockets towards 2 million subscribers. I love playing these games and I hope you've enjoyed watching them. I'll see you all next time. Have a fantastic day, evening or afternoon or good night or whatever it may be. And I hope to see you all next time. And I hope you've enjoyed this new Survival City Builder. All right. Goodbye.